when I, it muffles my speech. So I'm gonna have mine all the time when I'm singing and stuff. And especially during the singing, and remember to practice your social distancing. Um, online opportunities this week, on Monday at noon, we will have a time of fellowship via Zoom. And on Wednesday at 4 p.m., Ron and Rachel lead a time of music and devotion through the church Facebook uh, site. So you can go to that and see it live on Facebook. And please take time or take note of the other announcements that we have printed in, each, in the bulletin each week and printed on the bulletin sheet. Prayer concerns. Do we have any? anybody? Okay. Y'all just keep praying for everybody that you're praying for that's on the prayer list that are in the bulletin. And uh, pray for each other and pray for me and pray for Rachel and Ron. And don't forget Kim. <laughs> Do what now? And Texas. And Texas. Oh, yes. Pray for Texas. My goodness. What a mess. Okay, now it's time for bringing in the light. our souls to you. Make us to know your ways. Watch us and teach us on your paths. For you are the God of our salvation. And for you, we wait all the day long. We now sing the hymn, This is My Father's World, number 144.
Would you please bow your head? Oh God, whose love and mercy are great, you have blessed us in many ways throughout the season of Lent. May we see again the depth of your love for us. Please teach us how to extend your love and grace to others through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we'll have the Old Testament lesson. The Old Testament reading comes from the book of Genesis, the ninth chapter, starting with the eighth verse and reading through the seventeenth. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the sky, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
gospel lesson today comes from the gospel according to Mark, the first chapter, verses 9 through 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts. And the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Have any of you ever taken a trip into the wilderness? I grew up in a family that camped. We car camped. We had a huge tent that we had bunk bed cots that we slept on. We had a dining canopy, we had a cooking stove, we had lanterns, but my mom often tried to find campgrounds that had electricity and we carried electric lights with us also. My parents had to purchase a utility trailer so they could put all that equipment in it that they carried behind the family station wagon. I, I think on those trips into the camping wilderness, we took as many of the comforts of home as we possibly could with us. In contrast to that, I remember having a conversation with a friend who she and her husband were backpackers, and she was discussing how her husband was taking their toothbrushes and drilling them so they were hollow, so they wouldn't have as much weight in their backpack. <laughs> when you're carrying all your supplies on your back, I think you're much more concerned about how much stuff you carry with you into the wilderness. Going into the wilderness can be a challenging experience, and making sure that you have exactly what you need is important. I am probably one of those people that's a little overprepared, but if I even go on a day hike, I've got a flashlight, even though it's the day. I've got an emergency bank, uh, blanket, one of those little things that folds up real small. I've got a knife. I've got a first aid kit, and it has to have mole skin in it in case you get blisters. And of course, I take plenty of food and water. What do we carry into our spiritual wilderness experiences? Perhaps the most important thing is the knowledge that God is with us. In the scriptures today, we read about what I would call two wilderness experiences, Jesus going into the desert and Noah on the ark. Now, I know technically being on the ark is not an into the wilderness experience, but think about being on that ark with all the animals. I thought it's kind of like camping, but you take all the wild beasts with you. But if you think of the wilderness as a place of desolation, being on the ark in the middle of a flood probably qualifies as being in a wilderness. In both of those scriptures, one theme that emerges about going into that place that's considered the wilderness is that it is a place of isolation. And it can be a place of desolation. The wilderness is a place when it's used in scripture that always represents loss and grief and brokenness and alienation. For Jesus, that place is the desert where he's tempted by Satan. For Noah and his family, it's on the ark in the flood as the earth is destroyed. We can think of the wilderness as a liminal space. Liminal means between two places. It's a transitional place. What has come before will not be like what comes after. Jesus goes into the wilderness after he's been baptized and he comes out preaching. For Noah and his family, the flood is most certainly a liminal space because what was before will not be like what was after. 
In the flood story, there's this connection to the creation story. If you go back and you read all those chapters that speak about the flood, you can see that as the flood comes, it's a reverse of creation. And then as the waters recede, it's a reenactment of creation. As the, world, as the re- water is receding, God is recreating the world. The world with the flood becomes without form and void, covered with water, which is what the, the first chapter of Genesis tells us. And that water represents chaos. And Noah and the ark are in the midst of that chaos. But then God recreates the world and creates order once more out of that chaos of the flood. In the midst of the flood, we can see that there's liminal space. What has gone before is not like what will follow exactly. I would say the year 2020 was a liminal space. Nothing will ever be the same after this last year. What will come in the future will not be like what has been. We have turned some kind of corner in this year. In Mark's gospel, we see Jesus emerge from the wilderness and begin to proclaim the good news. That is not something we've heard that he's done until this point in his life. In the passage which I read from Genesis, we see that God is saying things should not be the same. And to to say that he won't ever do what he's done God sets the bow in the clouds as a reminder. I've shared with y'all before, when I heard that when I was a child and thought of the bow, I always thought it meant like a ribbon, like a hair bow. But it's the archer's bow that is set at rest. So that if, if you see the bow like this, that means the arrows would be shooting up and not down towards the earth. So God has set the bow in the clouds. God will not destroy the world again. And it's a promise that God makes to all of creation. If you read that scripture, if you listen carefully, God continues to say to you and your family and to all living creatures and to all of creation, God is making that promise. What's interesting to note, though, is that God doesn't say, as a sign of this, there'll be a cloudless sky. It's a rainbow. What do you need in order to have a rainbow? You have to have rain. There has to be some precipitation, some water in the air for that rainbow to appear. The promise of the rainbow isn't that there will never be any rain again or hurt or destruction. It's just that it will not completely destroy. The promise is that there's life after loss. There is resurrection after death. There will be a recovery after destruction. I think that is a message that we really need to hear today. After a week where we know our neighbors in Texas are suffering like they are. After a year when there has been so much sickness and death and loss. I need to hear Jesus say, I will be with you. You will recover. The rainbow is a reminder to us that God is with us. God loves us. God loves all of creation. And God loves us despite the storms that we encounter, despite the poor choices that we make, despite the wilderness through which we walk. God is with us. In the midst of the wilderness, we we feel that we are surrounded by wild beasts. We may feel that the floodwaters will overwhelm us. And yet we can remember that Jesus has walked through the same wilderness and been tested by Satan. And the hope that we have because of that is not a false optimism, but a certainty because we know that Jesus has walked the walk. And God has promised through the rainbow to be with us. The wilderness is sometimes a place that we choose to go. We may decide that's our journey right now. We want to go into a a place of spiritual retreat. But sometimes the wilderness is a place that we're forced to go. 
If you read that scripture carefully that I, that I read from Mark, it says the Spirit drove Jesus out into the wilderness. Sometimes it's a place that we have to go. And it can be a place of spiritual testing. Not necessarily temptation, but testing. The testing can teach us to rely on God. That we need to rely on God's guidance, on God's strength. The wilderness can teach us to believe that God will provide for us. In that way, the wilderness can become that place of spiritual renewal and retreat. Has the, the liminal year of 2020 been one of spiritual renewal for you? I think I've lost my microphone. Yeah. <laughs> and the extra one is not. Because I know the people at home can't hear if there's not a microphone on. <laughs> Whether or not we choose to go to the wilderness or it's something that's forced upon us, it can be a place where we learn to rely on God. It can be a place that we have renewal in our spiritual life. In, in this last year, though, have we looked at this year as an opportunity for spiritual renewal? Has it been a year when we have purposely uh, seen the wilderness as a place where we can meet God again? Uh, we, we began this season of Lent on Wednesday, and yet it feels like we have lived through a year of Lent, of austerity, of sacrifice. And so perhaps this Lent might look a little different for us. Perhaps instead of seeing Lent as a time of sacrifice, we might see it as a time of simplicity. And that takes me back to thinking about what we take with us into the wilderness. When Ron and I hiked into the Grand Canyon 10 years ago, I mean a long time ago now, <laughs> But we were going for 10 days, and all we could take with us was a pack we had to carry on our backs ourselves for eight miles down into the canyon. And then uh, we could pack 30 pounds in a duffel bag that went on the donkey train. We didn't have to carry that one. But, but having to choose what I was going to have in those bags for 10 days really made me think about what was important. What did I really want to take? Simplicity was important. When we go into spiritual wilderness places, we can decide what we're going to take with us. What are the tools that we're going to use to really listen to God? What are the things that we're going to invite into our lives so that we can hear God's Spirit speaking to us again? So as we enter this Lenten season, I invite you to think of it not just as entering the wilderness, but as taking an adventure. Kim, a journey. God spoke to her that that was the song she sang this morning because that's the theme here, that we take a journey with God. Why can't it be an adventure in which we can embrace God's creation? A place where we can listen for God's spirit. When we hiked into the Grand Canyon, we didn't do it by ourselves. We had a guide. We didn't raft down that river on our own. We had guides. When we go into the spiritual wilderness, the spirit is our guide. And we have to be willing to listen and to be receptive to the spirit's guidance. As we journey through the wilderness, I hope that you can see the beauty that is there, the beauty of the creation that God loves, even if it seems out of, out of sync, not quite right right now. May you see these 40 days of Lent 
as a time of listening, a time of looking for the rainbows. May you find the assurance of God's presence with you through all the rain and storms. May you know God's spirit surrounding you and guiding you. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, come and be our guide throughout this season of Lent. As we enter this time, may we find ways to seek out your presence with us. May we once again learn to rely on you as our strength, as the source of our life. Forgive us for the times when we wander off the trail and seek our own way. Show us again the path of eternal life. Open our eyes that we can see the rainbows that remind us that there is life after loss, resurrection after death. Lord, help us to lay our worries and concerns before you. At times we feel surrounded by chaos. Assure us once again that you are present in the midst of every wilderness moment in our lives. We lift before you those who are in need of the rainbows in their lives, for those who feel overwhelmed by the floodwaters of suffering and pain. We ask that your healing hand would be upon those who are sick in body and mind and spirit, restoring them to health and wholeness. Gracious God, we thank you that you are the one who hears and answers our prayers. We thank you for Jesus and ask these things in Christ's name as we pray as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I would remind those of you that are here in the room that the offering plates are at the doors. I'd remind those who are joining us virtually that you may always send your offering to the church. And then as, as we enter this season of Lent, I invite you, instead of giving something up this year, to take something up. There, in, the, in the pews, for those of you that are here, there's a sheet about it. I've sent a, an email to folks, and it's included in the worship bulletin that was sent this week by email. There's some suggestions there for what kind of practices you might take up. I hope that you will see this season as a time when you can draw closer to God by offering yourself in service to others. So our closing hymn, I do not know. My hope is built. Let us sing together.
May you go forth to love and serve. May you go forth on the journey, the adventure that God leads you on and guides you. And may you see the rainbows in your life. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.